Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at this Origami Carabiner by Charlie1982. First things first, we're going to go down to the developer notes, see if they have any specifications. And it looks like they do have quite a few. They say no rafts, no supports, a solution of 0.2 millimeters, and an infill of 50%. They also add some notes where they specify a shell loop of 3. And we'll go more into depth on what exactly that means. But for now, the next step will be to download all files. And once you do, you're going to have two STLs. Now, this model needs to be assembled. So you will need to print off both of these files in order to make the functioning model. Now, luckily, you will not need any glue or adhesive to connect these two. They will connect on their own via their own uh, individual mechanisms. So let's click and drag to select both and throw them both into your slicer of choice. Once the models finish loading in, make sure you do have two pieces rather than just one. If you do have one missing, try to add the other one at the same time to see if that uh, brings both of them in. So the first thing I want to do is move both of these to the middle because it looks like they're a little skewed to the left. So to do that, all I have to do is click on one of them and then click on this red arrow and drag it. And it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but just put it somewhere near the middle. Next, we're going to select the layer height. The recommendation was 0.2 millimeters, so we're going to click on the 0.2. If this pops up, simply click on discard. Next, shell. The developer set a shell loop of three. That basically means how many lines do we do before we reach the outer model to the infill. So in order to change that, simply go to this wall line count under shell and change it to three. It might already be at three, mine was at two, but whatever it is, just change it to three. Next, we're gonna go to infill, which is right below it. Where it says infill density, we're gonna up it from 20% all the way up to 50%. That will just add more material on the inside, effectively making the part a little stronger. Next, we're gonna go to supports. Now, supports, the developer said none, so we're gonna make sure this is unticked. Next is build plate adhesion. Developer said it doesn't matter. If we take a look at the bottom of the, of the uh, model itself, we see there's sufficient contact area with the actual build plate noted by this red. So we will not need any supports, I mean, sorry, build plate adhesion. So leave it as disabled or skirt, whatever it is, just don't touch it, uh, but make sure it's not under raft or brim. And other than that, we're set. So all I have to do now is click on slice and give it a few seconds to slice. Once it's finished slicing, you should be given a time estimate of roughly two hours and 16 minutes, but that will definitely depend on the printer you're using and the settings you use, as well as an estimated filament usage of 16 grams. Now, we always preview the print, see if anything weird or funky is going on. Now, if yours looks gray like this, all I have to do is just click on the slider up here and drag it up and down. I'll go back to its regular colors. So uh, once again, take a look around the model. Everything looks complete. Nothing weird or funky going on. So all I have to do now is send it over to the printer for printing. Here's the model straight off the print bed. The only thing worth noticing is that the model is actually 9.5 centimeters long, which is pretty big. The assembly is not too difficult. All you have to do is make sure that both the logo and the text are facing upwards when you start. Next, you're going to place the smaller part shaft into the bigger parts hole. Now this may take a little bit of force, but it can definitely squeeze in there. Finally, you push both parts together until it snaps and then you are finished. The carabiner does feel pretty strong and stiff and the developer does claim that it should be able to support 15 to 35 kilograms or 33 to 77 pounds. 
I haven't tested or used this model myself, but I would feel confident in connecting this to my backpack and attaching some sort of lunchbox or smaller bag to it. 